Okay. We're doing Chovas Alevavos. David, you with us? I am, Rabbi. Good. Okay. One ninety two bottom paragraph. Umi rova tova ala adam. We see the abundant, abundant goodness that Hashem provides for the human being. We're talking about in development. Shenil maski vulamaka tova rabbi shall do so. As a child, a child doesn't know many things. That, what's good, what's not good. You know, a person gets older, we have worries. What do we have worries? Because we have a, a, a sense of responsibility or of a sense of the way things should be and therefore we're concerned about things. When we recognize things to be problematic, what does a child understand? child believes it's okay. You know, the uh, Rabbi Rebachia, in one of his introductions to the parsha, every parsha is based on the person initially introduces the parsha, and he explains, he says, as a child develops, so, and he's nursed by his mother. Small child. His mother's his world. His intelligence really hasn't developed sufficiently to recognize the value of his father. So who's his mother? His mother is the breast. That's what his mother is. That's his source of nourishment. Warmth, security, that's the mother. The body of the mother, the nursing of the mother. The child develops a little bit, begins understanding. Who becomes the, the dominant role model? The father looks up to the father. The mother le becomes less important. She becomes a secondary uh, person in the family structure. The father. The father's everything. There's nothing the father can't do. There's nothing the father can't provide. The father's the ultimate protection. As the child gets older, the child realizes he also has capability. So you're ready. He detaches. He becomes a little more independent. Although he knows he still needs his father, he looks up to his father. What about he develops? Now he becomes an adult, he respects his father. But in terms of who his father is, he sees all the failings of the father. That his father is not as perfect as he saw his father when he was a young child. It's not, and as you want grow and you become, through experience and intelligence, we come upon many other realizations which we didn't realize when we were younger. Even though the, you should have had fears. If you have your father, you, know, you have nothing to fear. So, but, so God is shielding the child when he's young for many things because if he would be aware of certain things he wouldn't develop normally with all these concerns with all the distractions you know you say you know ignorance is bliss there's an expression in Yiddish nar is a negative is a, is a pejorative term prison is a nar he's a fool you ever see a person who's a true fool who has gray hair doesn't have gray hair so he says a nar doesn't have a worry doesn't make care in the world. Doesn't worry, because he's a nar, a nar elzechnisht. David, you hear it? A nar elzechnisht. A nar doesn't get older. He's 70 years old. He still has all the black hair in his head, one or two white hairs. Okay, because he's a nar. He's not in touch with reality. Everybody else should worry. He doesn't have what to worry about. Okay. Lo maktov rabbi shall do sheshim hoyasichlo v'akrosu shleimim, because of his intelligence and his ability to discern. And recognize would be fully developed base. Gidulo yake yisrom bnei adam olav v'adhigam atzmam mihirus tuvasam nikusam. He would be able to recognize that other people. He says advantage of other people had over him the way they conduct themselves in, in terms of the, the quickness of their movement or the level of cleanliness. They're able to care for themselves in terms of their cleanliness. He would actually, he would die from the worry and from what? From the, the sorrow. Where am I? I'm a failure. Right? It's interesting. You know, when the child grows up, there are many things he's not able to do because either, you know, mechanically, He's not, he's not agile enough. He does not able, you know. You have motor skills. You have certain things developed at certain times. So, certain child, he could start writing earlier. To be able to, you have to have certain mechanical skills. You don't have the mechanical skills, you can't. But it's not, it's not a shortcoming. It will come. But if a child realizes other people could, I can't. It's not a problem, right? But let's say the child would 
create tremendous frustration. Tremendous frustration. They could and I can't. See, if it's within a peer group, then, then, then you have frustrations. I should be like them. But if you don't understand and you see others can and you can't, he says the worry and the sorrow would ultimately compromise the person. The person ultimately would die from this. You feel there's no hope. I remember many years ago, the Baron Kotler, Zech Tzachos Brocha, had a grandson in Yeshiva. But he was a genius. Both his parents were geniuses. Phenomenally. The do- his mother was Rav Aaron's daughter, his only daughter. And um, she was a professor in uh, mm-hmm. City College in chemistry. She was a chemistry professor. She was a genius beyond. He used to say then, the Rav Schneer, Zech Tzachos Brocha, was Rav Aaron's son. He was a Yeshiva in Lakewood after his father passed away. They said that his daughter had his, his father had the father's head. As, as, as brilliant as Rav Schneer was, he did not have the mind of his father. His sister had his, his father's mind. I mean, not quite, but okay. So this boy came to Yeshiva. He was 10 years old and genius. And when he was 13 years old, his chavrus in Yeshiva was somebody who was 26. Well, he was a 26-year-old person, you know? Almost toe-to-toe in terms of uh, capability, intelligence capability. So um, so he said, his, he wrote his own Bar Mitzvah Peshetl, his own Bar Mitzvah Tvar Torah, which he said in Lakewood. And because it was Rav Aaron's grandchildren, grandchild, all the, all the Rosh Hashivas from, from, from all over America came to the Bar Mitzvah in Lakewood. It was in Lakewood, the Bar Mitzvah. Even the Rosh Hashivas from Europe, from Israel, the Pond of Vichorov came, they all came in honor, in honor of Rav Aaron, Rav Aaron's grandson. And because the, the, the parents were divorced. The parents were divorced because she was such a genius. It wasn't, it, w- it wasn't a simple situation. She wasn't a well person also. So what happened was, so after he said his Bar Mitzvah Russia, so one of the people asked on it. You know, and he was like, yeah, person in his 40s, he says, I'm, only, I'm, I'm a child. I'm only, this was genius. He said, you, you mean, you're asking on a, a 13-year-old boy? You're asking, I'm only a child. What do you want from me? You understand? <laughs> that, was, that, was his, that was his response. You know, it was a valid question, but I'm only a child. What do you want from me? Mm-hmm. Okay, but you think you're more than a child, okay? Mm-hmm. But see, he had it both ways. He had the age advantage. He had the advantage of being younger, and he had the advantage of being a genius. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. He says, what's remarkable is a child cries, crying. He says, it's beneficial to cry. What is crying? It's an expression of what? Of pain. That's what crying is. A person who lets pain be pent up and doesn't express that they say this, you know, in regard to uh, sitting Shiva. You know, in, in modern terms, you know, they call it closure. People have to have closure. You don't have closure, a person ultimately could c- c- die, c- die from that from that sorrow which the person's always hoping. You're hoping for something that never happens. It never will be. You have to make peace and just go on with life. Otherwise, crying, a person doesn't cry, it's a problem. Because you you're not expressing your emotion. He says, you hear what he says? He says, a child, in, when a child is born, there's a certain level of what? Oh, he says, elemental, an elemental fluid, the fluids in the body. Those fluids have to release themselves. So by a child continuously crying, naturally crying, that lecho, that moisture, the fluids, they're released. They're release, released through the tears. Because if those fluids remain in the body, it creates negative things. It actually releases this fluid from the brain, from the brain, and from what? From the injurious effects.
you know, you say, why do you cry? I mean, how would the mother know that the child doesn't eat if she wouldn't cry? The child can't speak. So by crying, and ch child has no movement, so child has no intelligence. So the reflex of crying alerts the mother, whoever's taking care of the child, that the child has a need, whether it's uh, comfort, whether it's feeding, whatever it may be. I mean, that's what it's there. You say, but why do you have to have uh, tears, right? The child just could, could groan in pain, right? A person, when he, if he's hungry, he has pain. Does he start crying? doesn't, but a child cries. I mean, that he's addressing the, the, the release of fluids. See, this is not Ernie's area. Ernie's below the knee. This is already, this is already the, the head. Okay, to be continued.